Alright everybody, we are here going into the top eight of U.S. Nationals. I am Kyle Sukovich. With me is Michael Pramalant. And after that last match, I don't know if anything can top that, but we got an interesting matchup for this one. Yeah, it's the uh, one of our members actually hates this deck. Sure does. Uh, we have John Roberts II, who's using good old Kling Klang. Uh, our very own hostway, Crim Zohano, hated on this deck for weeks and weeks. And here it is in the top eight of Nationals. He's going up against Carl Shu, who's using a Dark Ride deck. I'm not sure what else is in there, but let's cut to the match. Yeah, I think... Uh, I may have been the only one to like the defend Clink Clank for a little bit. Yeah, I was I was on the Clink Clank bandwagon too. <laughs> Don't count me out. <laughs> um, looks like uh, John's gonna go first. Yeah, looks like John will go first, which is always a huge advantage for Pokemon. Um, you get to do everything first. There's no yep. drawbacks to going first. Uh, and so, how do you think a matchup like this plays out? John, he's playing Clink Clank. I don't think he plays Vile Plume. It's just okay. Shift Gear, Max Potion, huge basic Pokemon. Yes. And Carl, I think it's a Dark Ride Terrakian variant. I'm not too sure. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if, if it's if it's the Hammer Time variant where it's just Crushing Hammer and Lost Remover, I think this is a blowout matchup. But any other way, I think this is really close. Yeah. Um, I don't think I'm not sure if Carl's playing Hammer Time. Uh, if he is, well then, uh, John this will be is going to be a pretty uneventful series. Yes. Uh, however, if he's not, then I think it's all we're going to. I think it's going to come down to how much pressure Carl puts on early. Um, you know, like like a Vileplume deck, John is a setup. It's going to take a while for him to set up. Right. Uh, he's, his deck's a little bit like Dylan's in terms of like just keeping a bunch of energies in play, and he can only play one per turn. Yeah, and uh, we see a heavy ball, which right away, that means, okay, he's playing the, uh, the trainer version. Um, no Vileplume at all here, and... So we're going to see trainers the entire match, not like last round where we had Bioplume shutting things off. We're going to see max potions. We're going to see heavy balls. Nothing is, is out of the question here. All right. And, oh, wow. Does Carl, I'm, I wonder if Carl has a supporter. Uh, the way he's like playing, uh, kind of like shrugging around suggests no. Yeah, wow. Well, he actually just goes for a Mewtwo and X-Ball on the first turn. He's going to hit that Groudon for 60. Uh, that is a Groudon EX, of course. Yes. It uh, had an energy on it, so it got hit with X-Ball for 60. It's got 180 hit points, though, so he'll be okay. Yeah, and uh, John just gets another Clink. Yep. Yeah, and... Um, we got a Clink and a Clang out there right now. <laughs> and they evolve into Clink Clang. Yeah. Is it evolve or more of a merger? They fuse into the mighty Clink Clang. Yeah. <laughs> um, it'd actually be a pretty interesting mechanic <laughs> if you just, like, took the two basics yeah, and just yeah. like, up. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, um... Be like the legends all over again. <laughs> uh, so we have a second energy coming down for John. Um, Ooh, and an EV light. Yes. And I think John's going to be... I think he's just pretty much set up. He has an N in his hand, doesn't want to play that clearly. Right. Uh, he he kind of senses weakness from Carl. And yep. um, it's just... Oh, wow, another DC for Carl, I think. Well, he, he just threw one. Yeah. He's going to X-Ball again. Yep, and let's see. Just doing the math... He'll be able to do, well, I mean, he's doing 40 right now. He'll be able to do 80 next turn with another double call. List. So uh, good decision to put a dark on the dark cry there. Uh, unless John can get a, a max potion this turn, that Groudon's actually going to go down, or at least a Kling Klang. Right. Um, you know, John's basically like, ah, uh, my hand's kind of not there yet. This is the bad situation with N. Yeah, but I have an N. And I know your hand's just completely not there. Right, but he does have that Kling Kling. He can use Shift Gear. He can move any metal energy around, which means Prism, Rainbow, or Basic Metal. Uh, so he can avoid his Groudon being knocked out. Yes. What do you think the play here is? Uh, do you sacrifice the Groudon? Oh, oh, he's retreating for the other Groudon. Yeah, you can get all sorts of tricky with Kling Kling. Oh, uh, yeah. You move the, the Prism up to the active, get the free retreat with Darkrai. You retreat, you move the energy back to an active, and now he can use Tromp. Doesn't do much damage, but it'll do 20 and 10 to that bench dark cry. Yes. Um, you know, and I was, whoa, 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 whoa. A potion. Is that a potion? <laughs> yeah, that's a potion. Uh-oh. I think that's card, the card's really in there for mirror matches, but it's actually turning out very effective here. It's very good against Groudon. Yeah. Um, I think that maybe what if John, like, sacrificed the Groudon, right? And then used them. Yeah, that wouldn't be a bad play. Yeah. Uh... Especially he's, with another N in his hand. Oh, my. That might be, like, his only play, almost. You can see he's like, why, God? 
but uh, he's got all sorts of options here. Well, actually, he doesn't have many. Um, he could attack with Kling Clang if he really wanted to. I don't know if he wants to do that, but uh, he has a really unfortunate hand. You have the supporter, but you have N. You know your opponent's hand is terrible. John recognizes, I do not want to play N. I don't want to give him a fresh six cards, so do I just kind of suck it up? It's almost like he doesn't have a supporter, too. Yeah, definitely. Um, but he's going to decide to play N. Uh, and I don't mind that, actually. Yeah, you're kind of facing imminent doom yeah. against that Mewtwo. <laughs> so, like, it's like, do I give him a new hand and possibly bail myself out of the situation, or do mm -hmm. I just sit here and accept doom? Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think you can accept doom, especially when you're set up already. You have the Kling Clang. Yeah. That is your biggest hurdle when you're setting up this deck, to get that stage 2 into play. Uh, Kling Clang is great because it's got 140 hit points, resistant to Psychic, so... The one big thing that would knock it out is a Mewtwo, which it'll take 8 energy from X-Ball to knock out the Kling Clang now. So it's pretty safe on your bench. You might think, oh, it's got a, what, a 4 retreat cost or something like that, but you just move a metal or a dark over to Kling Clang, which would be a rainbow. Right. And you give him free retreat, then it's fine. And you can just play a max potion and laugh at your opponent as they wasted a turn. Do we know if John plays his own Mewtwo? Uh, I assume he does. Uh, most of these decks do play their own U2, and it looks like he's going to go ahead and Night Spear here. Uh, this is a very strong move by uh, John. Um, yeah, he's going to put a lot of pressure on Carl right now. Not only that, Night Spear actually combos really well Brout with Groudon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. So, uh, I'm glad we get to feature this Kling Clank deck, because it's not seen very often. Uh, yes. It's started to pop up more around Battle Roads, but you can just kind of see how extremely scary this deck is. Um, Carl's like, well, I, I can knock out that Groudon next turn. And then John's just like, oh, well, I'm just going to move my energy to a different Groudon. And then Carl's like, all right, I'm going to knock out this Groudon. He's like, oh, I'm just going to move it to Darkrai. And then <laughs> Carl's like, well, 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 what about those guys? I want to knock those out. And then eventually John's going to be like, max potion. And uh, all the damage is going to get healed off. Uh, based on Carl's body language, I don't think he has another supporter in his hand. Again? Um, oh, oh, there he is. He does. He was just, I guess he was just kind of torn on what to do. Uh, I, what do you think about promoting this Darkrai? Uh, I'm kind of worried for Carl because that Darkrai has damage on it. Yeah, uh, it has an EV light on it, but it's already got 30 damage, yeah. at least 40, I 40 think. 40 because of yeah. the Tromp. Yeah, the Tromp. Uh, yeah, that thing is a sitting duck to just be knocked out by uh, Groudon next turn. I'm not sure how I feel. He used the Super Scoop up on the Mewtwo. Yes. Uh, that was just going to get knocked out. I really, I mean... What can Carl do? What do you think? Uh, this is actually turned into a really tough situation for Carl uh, <laughs> right away. Uh, you know, Carl is playing a bunch of EXs, and they all have weaknesses. Yeah. And you know what? John's playing all of those types. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and all EX forms, and so they're going to do massive damage, yeah. most likely one-shots, and Carl is just going to be in a tough situation. If he draws Potion here, though, he's, I think he's good. Yeah, Potion would be the one way for him to survive this turn. A Junk Arm would do it for a Potion. Uh, but, yeah, this is the strength of the Kling Clang deck. It's just, it runs like one of every type, and it runs all the Rainbow and Prism energy. So you just go, oh, you're weak to that one? I'll grab my Fighting Pokemon. Oh, you're weak to Psychic? I'll grab my Psychic Pokemon. And that's really just all it does. And these things have 180 hit points. Uh, Groudon, 180. Darkrai, 180. Mewtwo has 170. He's a little softer, but... Pretty much all of these have a ton of hit points. I think he even plays like Cure Army X, maybe even Entei EX. Just all this stuff with a ton of hit points. It's not going to get knocked out in one hit. Then he's going to shift the energy off and just go Max Potion, heal it all off, shift the energy back, and uh, it's tough to deal with if he ever sets up. Right. Um, so we do see a Dark Ride coming down yeah. from Carl. Uh, interesting that he didn't get a Smeargle. Uh, you know, maybe for later. But, right. um Okay, so he's going to go Night Spear, and that Darkrai is just going to get knocked out. Yeah, um, um, I don't know if Carl realizes Darkrai gives that Clink Clank free retreat. <laughs> uh, if he just shifts the rainbow up to it, he can just retreat, and Groudon's going to be knocking on his door, right. saying, what's up? Um, and <laughs> that's really all there is to it. <laughs> so there is a, mac or a rare candy into another Clink Clank, so... Maybe Carl was thinking, I'll take out that Clink Clank so he can't shift the energy anymore, but that option's gone, too. Everything is going really well for John. Yeah, uh, you know, all John has to do now is just retreat, set up a Groudon, 
shift gear all the energy over to ground on. Well, three energies over to ground on. Right. And then what does Carl do? Uh, I, he, just, he has no energy in play. He's got nothing going for him. Um, especially what do you do if John plays a max potion? I think that's just so devastating. Yeah, if John hits max potion here on that Eviolated Groudhon, I think Carl just like loses the game. Yeah, I think so. Um, and I think we should mention, this is the top eight of Nationals. Yes. The winner of this match, they went a fully paid trip to Hawaii. That yes. is, that's one expensive flight that you get paid for. So there's a lot of money on the line, including scholarship money as well. Uh, there's a ton of pressure on this match. And there's the max potion. Yep. Um, so yeah, I, I, these players have got to be nervous. Um, I, I'm, they're great players. They've made it this far. But when such a big prize is looming ahead, and it's this match makes or breaks so much money, you've got to be feeling the pressure. Yeah, and here's the ground on. It's just going to... Get in there against that 40 damage dark ride. Yeah. Uh, I think the attack's Giant Claw. I'm not too sure. Uh, it, it does 80 plus 40 if they already have damage. Mm -hmm. And dark ride is weak to fighting. So that's just going to obliterate the dark ride. Um, and yeah, Carl's only Pokemon with energy is gone. Of course, Dark Patch allows you to get multiple energy in play, but that's a lot of cards he's going to need to have. Yeah, not only does he have to send up, even if he wants to use Dark Patch, he has to send up Mewtwo, yeah. like he does here. So he's planning to do it, but he's going to need a lot. Uh, uh, well, there's two Dark Patches. There's a start. <laughs> uh, he still needs to get Mewtwo out of the active spot, too. So yeah. that's going to be a little bit of a hurdle, unless he has another Junk Arm. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll see what he's got. Uh, he puts a double colorless on the Dark Ride. He's thinking about it. Uh, I see what he's thinking about. He's try he's thinking about going double colorless on the Dark Ride, and then, wait, that wouldn't work, actually. <laughs> uh, I was thinking maybe he was thinking uh, Shaman, maybe? attach a Dark to Mewtwo and then attach double colorless the dark ride but yeah. that actually would not work at all yeah, uh, you need to attach twice for that yeah so he, he kind of like realized that as soon as he put the dce down he's like oh never mind <laughs> yeah and i mean this is almost an impossible situation to see your way out of um it, i mean i don't want to say that when the guy is only down two prizes this is like the fourth turn of the game or something but uh, i look ahead at what he has to face there's that crowd on with an eviolite it's got three energy it takes so much energy on Mewtwo to knock that out in one hit. And if you don't knock it out in one hit, what happens? Max Potion. Yes. Um, so uh, what what's going through your mind? You're like, how do I ever knock these things out? Um, I think I think everyone's game plan is just generally Mewtwo. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately for Carl, his deck doesn't really energy accelerate that well. Yeah. On Psychic Pokemon. Uh, you know, decks like uh, CMT, decks like Eels. They can get a Mewtwo out with a lot of energy. Eh, not easily, but it's doable. Right. Uh, Carl, he's going to he's gonna need to maybe play Shaman. Mm -hmm. uh, get a ton of energy. He has to live that long, too. Yeah. And then come in with Mewtwo. And then, and then he has to go, <laughs> and I hope you don't play Mewtwo. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, like you said, it takes so much for him to power up one Mewtwo. God forbid that thing gets knocked out. He's never getting another one. He's yes. probably just going to lose. Um, so if you're John, you have to be feeling very confident in the situation. You have not one, but two Kling Klangs in play. That's a lot of metal going on out there. And you got four energy in play right now, I believe. You can do pretty much whatever you want. Um, yeah, I don't know what you would actually be worried about in this situation. Well, I think what Carl's game plan here is, he's like, okay, your Groudon can't actually one-shot me if I have no damage on it. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out your Kling Planks. And hopefully you won't be able to move energies around. So when I do go Mewtwo, right. you will just be out of the game because you have no energy on the field. Yeah. Now the question is, is he going to have enough time to do this? Um, John's going to be knocked on his door with attackers every turn. Uh, fortunately for him, Groudon does not knock out a Dark Ryan in one hit if they don't have damage on them already. So... <laughs> Uh, unless we see John drop like a Terrakian, his Dark Ride should be safe for a turn. But uh, you never know what can happen with Kling Clang. I mean, this deck can play anything. I've even seen Kyogre EX in this deck. Yeah, Ky I wonder if Ky uh, John plays Kyogre. Yeah. Uh, I think it's really good versus the Vileplume decks, personally. Mm -hmm. But um, we'll see. And we do see a Kling Clang go down. So that other one is at like 70. Yeah, the other one's in range of being knocked out, so um, if he doesn't get a max potion, that could be knocked out soon. Yeah, uh, definitely. 
Ooh, a revive. I wonder what he... He's going to get another clink. He realizes, okay, I need clink clang for my deck to thrive. So, just in case I get knocked out, I need to have another one out there. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And is that a second special medal? Uh, I don't know if that's special medal or basic. I, I'm actually not too sure. Um, I really can't tell. <laughs> All right. So, if you're John here, what do you do? Do you tromp or just go for the giant claw and do 160? Uh, yeah, I think you probably just are better off hitting it for 160. Um, you can set up a cool play with like Darkrai and Night Spear to finish it off. Um, you never want to know what can happen with Tromp because we saw Carl plays Potion. Yes. If he just heals off 30 of that 40, he didn't really get anywhere. So right, right. I would like to see Giant Claw. Okay, so so uh, we're probably going to see 160 this turn. Yeah. Carl probably kind of expected this. That's why he promoted the Darkrai. He's like, all right, that's fine. My Darkrai will live. So he's going to have three energies, maybe four when he attaches, maybe five if it's a DCE. Yep. And that still does not knock out Groudon. <laughs> no, it doesn't. And that's just how strong this deck is. <laughs> uh, and there's Max Potion. Go figure. Um, I don't know how many John actually plays. It might be four. Wow, that's quite a lot. Yeah, so his Pokemon just, they don't die. That's the point of this deck. Once you get set up, your Pokemon just, like, don't get knocked out. You conserve all the energy. You heal them off, and you, usually you fall behind early, and they they put pressure on you before you set up, but uh, that didn't happen this game. And yeah. when that doesn't happen, I don't know how you beat Clink Clank. Right. And it's vi I'm sure John has encountered this situation many times yeah. in, in the course of this very long tournament. Uh, he realizes, you know what, my deck is a little weak to Mewtwo. Mm -hmm. So I see what you're doing. I am going to do my best to stop you. Yeah. Uh, now, John actually did a different play, which was much smarter than what we thought of. He actually retreated to Darkrai and hit the Mewtwo for 90 and the Darkrai for 30. Yes. Now, that's going to set up Mewtwo to be knocked out by pretty much anything later and also set up Darkrai to be knocked out by Giant Claw. So, uh, John, I mean, he's a really smart player. You can see that. He's very experienced with this Kling Kling deck. He knows all the options, all the, all the ways to beat people, and uh, it's just really impressive to watch. It's, it's kind of astounding how much synergy Darkrai and Groudon have when you have a deck like this. Yeah. You know, you kind of look at them and you go, too dark, too fighting. How will this ever work? Yeah. And uh, you know, Clink Clink decks have definitely found the answer. Yeah. I mean, you can play anything. Uh, it's just the power of Rainbow and Prism Energy. They count for any type of energy. And go figure. All of the huge attackers in this format happen to be basics. So Prism Energy works on all of them. You can literally run any type of a big basic Pokemon with this deck. And we did see uh, John draw another Max Potion. <laughs> so regardless of what Carl does, unless it's a one-shot, uh, that damage is going to get healed away. And is that his third Max Potion without Junk Arm? Uh, yeah, it is. Woo! So he may actually just play four. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the things that we always talk about is, is your deck vulnerable to stuff like M, which... Decks like Electric, they're not as vulnerable. Um, you, you can Dynamo or you don't need the energy in your hand anymore. Whereas a deck like CMT, you always need to play stuff from your hand. Kling Clang is one of those decks where you don't need anything in your hand. You already have the energy out there. You just kind of move it around wherever you want. Every once in a while, you need to max potion. But once you're set up, that's it. You're set up. You have everything. So uh, I think that's another cool aspect of this deck. Uh, N probably won't be too big of a deal unless it's like a big Mewtwo plus N where John can't draw his own Mewtwo. Oh, this, this combo has is so strong. He just only he only takes 70 from that Dark Rye, and now that Dark Rye is just going to... Carl's Dark Rye is just going to get a giant claw. Just going to get a big claw to his face, and... Uh, more prizes. Yeah. yeah. And, man, uh, this has to be scary for Carl. I mean, you look at it, you're like, clink, clink, what's that thing? Yes. <laughs> like, is this guy's deck a joke? But... Uh, then he sets up, and you're like, oh, uh, I thought my dark ride was pretty good, but I can't kill anything. And John just put down his fourth Ebulite. Almost. Uh, he's he kind plays of... four Ebulite, and I think four Max Potions, so his, his Pokemon just do not get knocked out. Well, that's a very strong strategy. You know, he's just saying, listen, you're never going to knock my Pokemon out. Yeah. And I'm just going to peg at you until I have enough energy on the field uh -huh. so where I can just giant claw you in the face. <laughs> so, and that strategy 
actually has been very strong for John. Yeah. You know, he must. Can Dark Knight even beat this deck? Uh, when it sets up like this, I have no idea how Dark Knight beats this deck. I really don't. Um, unless Mewtwo comes out with a ton of energy, like you said. You, the the flaw with Darkrai, yes, it's fast. It does a lot of damage, uh, a moderate amount of damage, and it does the bench damage. The flaw with it, it doesn't get those big one-hit knockouts. This is why it struggles with the decks like Vanillux. You just can't knock it out in one hit. So against something like Kling Clang, where now I'm only doing 70 because of Eviolite, and all this Pokemon have 180 hit points. I mean, what's your game plan? Um, turn one Darkrai seems pretty good. Yeah. But, uh, that's unfortunately, Carl did not get that. He gets a second Mewtwo here, so he's just like, alright, this one Mewtwo, he's not doing the job. Uh, if you have a catcher, you probably win. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This Mewtwo, it didn't do the job. Full art Mewtwo. He's <laughs> going all the way, though. <laughs> well, look at him. He's so strong. Yeah, I know. He looks so intimidating. And we do see an M. Okay, so, uh, right now, Carl only has that double colorless in play. I don't see what he's going to do with that. He can expo for, what, 80? I That's think it. I think the play here is to sacrifice the uh, Spear Girl. I can uh, see that. And, you know, draw another N. Mm -hmm. Put Carl to one. Yeah. And, oh, I'm sorry, John to one. And maybe have two DCs on that Mewtwo. And then, you know, see what where that goes. You know, he can... Carl is playing just the end amount of the game. So what he needs to do is maybe draw a lot of potions. He does play potion, junk arm yep. for potions. Uh, he needs to get another Eviolite on that Mewtwo. Right. And he needs to just amass a ton of energy on that Mewtwo so it can go all the way. If John's at one, you know, he may not draw an answer to that Mewtwo in time. Mm -hmm. Now, we did see John's hand off that portrait. He had a Kyogre EX, so we confirmed he does play that. And he had an Oak's New Theory. So um, really good hand off that end. Really, all he needs is a catcher and the game's over. Yes. Uh, or a Mewtwo, even. So, either of those, and he'll probably just win the game next turn. Carl's going to try to find a way out. And, again, this is kind of the same situation as last round. John's deck is slow. Carl's is fast. He wants these games to be long and drawn out so that it's a low time situation in game three. Um, it'll go to sudden death. The faster deck will win out. Yes. So, looks like John decides to bench the Kyogre. Uh, does that mean he doesn't play Mewtwo? Um, I, I just don't. I don't think he plays Mewtwo, and he also just does it to uh, lower his deck count. Uh, you know, he's just looking for catcher here. He's just like, whatever, I'll just catcher you, and you lose. Yeah. So uh, that's all that. That's all I think that's really saying. Uh, he just really wants to get his catcher out. Uh, he may play Mewtwo. He may just feel like he's just that far ahead, so where you know I can stack a bunch of damage on you. And I have the option to dual splash you out of the game. Yeah. Uh, now, unfortunately for John, the Eviolate is on that Mewtwo with 90. So, dual splash not going to be too effective. It's going to take, what, probably three more? Um, plus yeah. 90, yeah. Three more. Three more to get a knockout there. But he's going to set it up. Um, Let's see. Hmm. Kind of an interesting move, uh, but I like it. It does 50, that's going to set it up for a giant claw knockout, and then it'll get to do 50 to another Pokemon. Uh, I assume it'll be 30 to that other Mewtwo. And he's just saying, alright, you got you got two Mewtwos, I got two prizes, one of those is going down. What do you think of um, using Darkrai here instead of Kyogre? Yeah, that, that's also another option, uh, I wouldn't mind seeing that. I think he probably thinks Kyogre might be safer. Uh, I really don't know if it makes a difference, to be honest. I would have just liked to see the 90 go on the Mewtwo and then 30 on uh, Smeargle. That way you can have the option to knock out Smeargle if you want to take that prize. Yeah. And you can still draw Catcher on either Mewtwo to win the game. In yeah. case there's a, you know, another uh, Eviolite that comes down. Or just whatever. Um, yeah, but either way, I think Carl pretty much lost this game. We're going to see if he draws a Junk Arm for a Potion. If not, it's just Giant Claw, game over. Yes. Um, or he can retreat to Smeargle if he really wants to prolong the game, which looks like what he's doing. But if he can't heal either of those Mewtwo's, uh, that's it. It's over. Yep. Groudon just comes up and just swipes at one of the Mewtwo's, and he's out of there. I think that's uh, pretty intelligent by Carl. You know, we saw the last game mm -hmm. go to time, the last match go to time. 
And he realizes that, you know, while John may not be a Vileplume duck, yeah. he can still take a while to settle. Right. And that's going to play in Carl's favor. He's the dark fight duck. He's like, he's the guy who says, I am going to take a bunch of prizes early. Potion. Potion. Oh. <laughs> uh, but I really don't think that'll be enough. This is just seems like an inevitability. John... I mean, I'm very afraid to call any game over now after Tom won that first game in the top 16, but um, when you look at this, it's just um, Kling Klang, he's got two out. Or actually, he's only got one out, but yeah. he's able to shift energy pretty much anywhere he wants. He's got a bunch of attackers. Uh, I, I don't... There's oh, a catcher. catcher yeah. So he just made it simple for us. Uh, All right. John Roberts, the second, will win the first game in this top eight match. Hmm. A pretty straightforward game. Yeah, um, nothing too fancy, just uh, John's deck doing what it does. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, it's really the strength of the Vileplume less uh, version, where, you know, Vileplume decks, they can have some trouble early mm -hmm. on with the early pressure. You know, if, if Dark Rye puts a bunch of damage on the field, it can have, it can have a lot of trouble just trying to do anything uh, and survive long enough to do stuff, uh, yeah. to really get going. However, John's deck is... Much more trainer based, so it says, okay, you may put on that early game pressure, but what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna heal all that damage off, and you know what? Your attacks early really didn't matter because of Max Potion. Yeah, the only reason that people would play Vileplume in this sort of deck is because of the popularity of Lost Remover. Uh, it was a card that gained a lot of attention after uh, that deck was posted on the deck out. It was the Hammer Time deck with just four Crushing Hammer two Enhanced Hammer or Lost Remover, whichever one, and the Sableye to keep getting back, that Energy Denial. Kling Clang absolutely cannot beat that deck. Um, yes. Your energy just gets removed. I mean, uh, probably like 8 out of your 11 energy or something like that are all special energy, and you just get removed out of the game. That's like, that's, that's an auto loss. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know how else to put that. Yeah. Uh, but when decks don't play the Energy Denial, this is an extremely powerful deck, and that's just what we're seeing here. Yeah, it does lose to Sableye Loss Remover, of yeah, course. Even Crushing Hammer. Eh, maybe. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's just about as bad. That's a flip. Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, you know, that, enough Tails, you may have enough time to knock out that Sableye and just stop them and be like, stop being silly. Yeah. Right? But with Loss Remover, it's the 100% sure thing. Uh, let's see. We do see a Mulligan from Carl and a Dark Rye and something else from John. So, uh Already added a little bit of advantage getting that extra card. Mm -hmm. So, John, going into game two, is probably feeling really good about this. Yeah, I mean, he has to be. He won the first game convincingly. That game was not even close. And if you play that game, you're like, really, that's all he's got? Am I really just going to walk into the top four and win a trip to Hawaii? I thought this tournament was supposed to be tough. Um, <laughs> and, I mean... I really think this is one of the decks that John wanted to play against. Yes. Um, there's no Lost Removers. Um, it's not any fancy Vanillux Paralysis deck. It's just a straightforward Dark Ride deck. And Kling Kling, I think it just beats that. I don't know how else to put it. Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree. Uh, I think the only real chance Dark Ride has, unless it gets a very quick start, is the Lost Remover. Yeah. Um, you know, it's very hard to keep up with the massive damage. You know, three turns later, if you haven't taken a prize yet, mm -hmm. or rather a significant energy prize, then the game could be over. Like, the game isn't really about uh, prizes, more as it's about energy on John's board. Right. It's, uh, it's a game of denying energy. It's. I actually love seeing this deck because it's like... The old school Venusaur. It's yeah, the, I remember that. It's the yeah. Venus Center deck. You know, you, you move your energy around, you play the Pokemon Center to heal everything, and once you get going, nobody can stop you as long as that energy's out there. Um, so it's really cool to see this deck kind of come to life with this new format. And yeah, uh, it's, it's all about energy. And oh, wow. Oh, wow. Uh, Carl goes first with a turn one draw pass. Um, Carl, okay, uh, I actually kind of confused why he put down a second Mewtwo, but he opens double Mewtwo, draws, and passes. Well, maybe he's hoping his opponent will play on. <laughs> yeah, that uh, usually doesn't work out very well. Uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, sometimes, but maybe not at the top eight of the U.S. National Championship. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think John's going to fall for that one. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, he does have an, an Eviolite. It's very nice to play four of that. Yeah. Uh, I really like the way he constructed his deck. It's, I do, too. It's very strong. And he can just do what he loves to do and say, hey, ha, 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 Krim, laugh in your face. <laughs> yeah, so John, the player from Yeti Gaming in Missouri, um, I mean, he was really one of the first players to use this deck. Yes. Uh, we heard about, uh, why is there a Kling Clang deck doing well? This was him. He won a Battle Road with it the first week of Battle Roads after Dark Explorers came out. He caused all the buzz with the deck. And so it, it's kind of fitting that kind of the creator of this deck is here in the top eight showing us how it's done. Yeah, he's probably has the most most developed list out of I mean, he has to, yeah, yeah. <laughs> out of everyone who played this deck at nationals. You know, that's that's really like a humbling thing when you make a deck and then you come to a big tournament like nationals and hey, there's a ton of people playing your deck. Yeah, yeah. So he, you know, he must be like on cloud nine right now. Yeah. Now, um, I think it's actually really cool that. Everything in his deck is searchable by Heavy Ball, pretty much. Yes. Um, even the Clink has a 3 retreat cost. I actually <laughs> didn't know that. Uh, I thought the Clink had a 2 retreat cost, but as a 3 retreat cost, you can actually grab it with Heavy Ball. So you can get Clink, Clang, or Clink, Clang, all with the Heavy Ball. That's really cool. It would make sense that the retreat cost doesn't change since they just fuse together rather than evolve. <laughs> Yeah, I think the Kling Kling gets, uh, gets a little heavier, so it's a 4 retreat cost, but uh, <laughs> that's understandable. But now, Carl draws and passes. This might be the most uneventful game I've seen in my life. He kind of flashes the camera. He's like, look how bad my hand is. Yeah, and if you're Carl, this has to be just disheartening. There's no other way to put it. Um, you're right here. You can win a trip to Hawaii. You just have to win one more match. You've made it all the way to the top eight. You are one of eight players remaining out of 1,005 Masters. Wow. You just got to win one more match. You go to Hawaii, fully paid, and you just sit there and you have to pass as your opponent steamrolls you. <laughs> uh, that's that's really heartbreaking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, however, uh, you know the game's not over yet. No, 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 not by any means. Uh, Carl is behind, yes. Yeah. But there may be ways he can come out of this. Mm -hmm. uh, he can. A big way would be getting rid of that clank. Is uh, that clank now? Yeah. Yeah, it's clang. But John has, an, John has the heavy ball, so he, oh, he will wow. be getting a clink clang. Gets the head, he, he shows he, the rare candy. He just, he just kind of draws the rare candy like, man, why couldn't this happen last year? <laughs> oh, well, whatever. Yeah. I forgive you, heavy ball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Carl, once again, drew an EV light or just attached in a patch. So no energy, no supporters, absolutely nothing for Carl that he can play. That's just, that's just amazing that you can actually draw that many cards and not be able to do anything. Yeah. Uh, and we are going to see a Night Spear coming out, so... Wow. Um, so a turn three Night Spear with a Clang Clang in play. Eviolate on the Darkrai. Carl draws a Super Rod. Are you kidding me? That is like the worst card he could ever draw. And uh, gets Tails on... I believe that was the Tails on Super Scoop Up. Yeah, so he can't well, even heal that Mewtwo. What else can go wrong? <laughs> well, it looks like a second Tails. Uh, I guess that can go wrong. <laughs> um... You know, I don't know if there's much that uh, Carl <laughs> John can do. chose the end. He's like, ah, not no, playing this card. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> um, so it looks like John's just gonna be like, you know what? Whatever, giant claw. This this combo has taken me all the way here <laughs> in, into the top eight. It's about to propel me into the top four. There's no, I might as well just stick with it. Yeah, and I gotta say. I never expected Groudon EX to be in the top four of U.S. Nationals. Um, we all wrote Groudon off as, eh, he's okay, but uh, why not play Terrakian instead? And, uh, well, John's like, well, this is why. He's good. Yeah. Darkrai and Groudon, they have a beautiful synergy together. Oh, man. And Carl, I mean, you just got to feel for the guy. He's putting down a shame, and he finally top decked to Juniper. Uh, maybe he can come back here, but... Um, I don't know how. <laughs> well, to put it bluntly, John is fully set up. Carl has done nothing yet, and he's down two prizes. Oh, Tornado CX. Interesting. Uh, that is one way uh, John can possibly come back. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Carl. Carl. Yeah. Uh, he can maybe get 100 
200 damage. Uh, you know, and then maybe uh, super scoop up that shaman later. Mm -hmm. And just say, hey, I did a lot of damage, and now my Mewtwo is going to come in, do more damage. Yeah. And who, who knows what goes on from there, but we do see a double uh, Max Potion, though, and just to get portraited. So. Yeah. Um, so maybe John's regretting saying, hey, look, I drew N. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a little bit of karma. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I'm sure Carl would have done that regardless. Yes. But, uh, yeah, I guess it's a little bit of karma there. But, um, I mean... Carl, he really can't do anything this turn to start to come back. It's going to have to be a gradual process where he builds up that Mewtwo, he just starts to use X-Ball, and the unfortunate thing for him is he already had to play his Shaman down. Uh, I'm actually not sure why he did that. Maybe to just prevent himself from being benched, but most decks play one Shaman. There might be two, but in this case, that's going to be a big liability. He won't be able to do the big celebration win, move all your energy to Mewtwo for a big hit. Well, you know, he was going to disc discard it with Juniper anyways. So you might as well play it down. Go, hey, at least if I don't hit another supporter or another basic, at least I don't lose this game. Right. At least my tournament run is not over. And, you know, he does play Super Scoop Up. Right, right. So he could just go, okay, I may not have any discard recovery, yeah. but I definitely have Super Scoop Up. <laughs> and this card has served me well in the past. So, you know, who knows what can happen. Um, Man, and... Sorry to cut you off, but this is just... Not only are we seeing Groudon EX in the top four, moving out of the top four, I assume, but, I mean, even in the top eight here, we're seeing Groudon EX and Kyogre EX. They're on the field at the same time. Aren't they supposed to be enemies? Well, you know, in the Ruby Sapphire game, yeah. <laughs> they did collide, but Kling Kling was just like, no, you I'm guys just, are working for me now. I'm just waiting for the Rayquaza to come down and uh, bring the peace, but... <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe next year. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, Dual Splash is... When you look at it, it's not too powerful. Uh, it takes two water and a colorless. It's not easy to power up. And it's pretty underwhelming. Just does 50 and 50. But in this situation where you can just go, all right, 50 to two different Pokemon, and then Max Potion, 50 again, you can start to take a ton of prizes. And that's what we're seeing here. Yeah, we're really seeing the beauty in John Zuck. Yeah. He really just goes, all right, I'm identifying what your deck does. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to put some damage counters on it for my Groudon to just one-shot you later. Yeah. Uh, it's it's very strong. Uh, you know, I, th I believe previously he got past uh, Excelgore yeah. in the round of eight. And I'm sure Kyogre was the big reason why. Oh, uh, yeah. I can see that, for sure. Um, Dual Splash, really good against Trainer Lock decks as well. But really good here, too. Um, just, it's actually... Just, it's, it's just kind of an overlooked card. Um, dual Splash, 50-50. That, that's strong. It can just two-hit stuff like Smeargle and Shaman. It can knock out two Oddishes in one turn, two Tandemos in one turn. Uh, there are a lot of options for it. You might not think 50 damage is a big deal, but you'd be surprised how many situations where it just ends the game. Yeah, you know, a lot of these overlooked cards are simply overlooked because... No one knows how to get them out. Yeah. No one knows how to power these monsters up <laughs> and go and take full advantage of it. You know, most people's solutions are very clunky. They don't really work well. But John has found a way to say, hey, these cards are actually really good. Mm -hmm. And this is how they work. And yeah. this is how you people should be playing this. Pretty much, yeah. Now, you see a junk arm. I can't see what he discarded because of the glare. It looked like a cling clang. Uh, maybe two cling clangs, actually. I can't tell. Uh, one for sure, but... So we do see a random receiver, just trying to get anything. Uh, probably not an end, though. <laughs> yeah, he, he wouldn't want to see an end here. Um, Carl did catch her out the Kling Clang and do 30 with blow through. Uh, still really not mounting any sort of offense. He, I mean, that he's just going to retreat the Kling Clang, shift gears, move the energy over, retreat. Yes. Might see another dual splash. Uh, we could see pretty much anything. He's got three different EXs he can attack with. Yeah, I would like to see... Actually, Dual Splash would be very good here because you can put another 50 on the Dark Ride, another 50 on the Mewtwo effect, or yeah, 50 on the Mewtwo effectively like saying, "Yeah, you tried to do this last game. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just not going to work." Yeah, it's just kind of a systematic tearing apart of Carl. Uh, it's really cool to see, honestly. I haven't seen a deck like this work in a long time, where it's just I'm going to slowly spread damage to these places and eventually 
your deck's just going to crumble. Mm -hmm. Your board's going to fall apart, and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, it's it's really beautiful to see a deck work as smoothly as this one. Yeah. Uh, some you know a lot of people were like, no, clink clang is clunky. Yeah, clunk clang. Um, <laughs> you know, there's no way you'll ever be able to do this consistently. And John's like, yes, you can. <laughs> yeah. He he's teaching us a lesson. That's for sure. Yeah. So um, we might see a giant claw here. It'll only do 80, but actually, no, we're going to see a catcher. And that's two more prizes for John. Yep. And Carl is in nothing but trouble, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, he's going to lose his Dark Rye. Um, and if one more catcher, and he's going to lose that me too, and that will be the game. Uh, you know, I, I really don't know if there's any way for Carl to come back here. You know, and it's great, but. Yeah, there is 30 damage on that Clink Clank. Uh-huh. So, bearing that John does not draw Catcher off two cards, he can still maybe come back in this game. He can ca draw Catcher out of plus power, mm -hmm. knock out that Clink Clank. Uh, it doesn't have any energy on it, so it only has 140, I believe. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you, you gust it up, you knock it out, and suddenly John's Robert, uh, his deck just comes to a halt. Yeah, uh, actually, I think John accounted for that. He spread it, he spread his energy out pretty well. There's two on the Kyogre, um, three on the Groudon, one on the other Groudon. So he left himself with options just in case. And once again, John drew an Oak's New Theory off his end. So this could be it. If he draws a catcher, this game's over. <laughs> his deck is like, I'm just going to mess around with you a little bit. I'm going to show you N. You're not going to play it. <laughs> But I'm still going to like uh, take you the victory. And, I, and there's a junk there's arm. there's a junk arm. That's and, it. And, yep, John Roberts, two O's, Carl Shue. Wow, that was actually a 6-0 victory. Not yeah. a single prize taken by Carl. John Roberts, the second. We'll move on to the top four at U.S. Nationals. Wow, what a great story. And oh, yeah. he's got a lot of fans here. Yeah, I'm one of them, definitely. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm a new fan. So, John Roberts, the player from Missouri, from Yeti Gaming. He's going to make it here in the top four at Nationals. Can't imagine what's going through his head right now. Uh, he's got to be excited. Oh, uh, probably ecstatic. You know, he he fought, fought all the like the naysayers. They're like, no, Kling Kling will never do well. Yeah, uh, it will never top four U.S. Nationals. It, it, he's in contention to win this tournament yeah. in very convincing fashion. We see he, Kling Kling. All right, uh, just yeah. take a second. Kling Kling, they can win nationals. All right. <laughs> so wow, uh, you know, generally. The, you don't think of like a deck, like you see a card like Clink Clang, you're like, this card's kind of underwhelming. Yeah. Uh, it's attack's not good. It's power's okay. How would you ever get that many metal energies on the field? Yeah. yeah. What uses metal energy anyway? Exactly. Uh, and here we are. Um, John playing extremely well. He, I mean, he was dominant. There's no other way to say it. He completely dominated that series. He's definitely a player to watch to win this event. Yeah, like, it was so convincing, like, it was a complete reversal of our top eight match. The top eight match, both players were so even, uh, skill-wise, deck-wise, the way the matches played out, you know, and this was a, just a blowout. Yeah, that was just cling-clang, just telling Carl... Thanks for showing up. Uh, I'll take my trip to Hawaii now. <laughs> uh, the crowd is cheering for John. I don't blame him. Yeah. He's definitely a fan favorite here. Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, I wonder what else, what other surprises he has in his deck. We saw Kyogre. I mean, he didn't even have to do anything fancy. He just kind of beat him down. <laughs> yeah, we saw Kyogre. Yeah. We saw Darkrai. And we saw Groudon. Yeah. That's a pretty powerful combination. Two of them from Ruby Sapphire, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty good generation. <laughs> um, will we see any other EXs? Do you know if he plays any others? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Uh, but until then, I mean, congratulations to John. Yes. We will be back with the top four later. I've been Kyle Sukovich. I'm Michael Premwatt. And we're here with the top cut. Stay tuned for more Nationals coverage.